All right, hello class. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to calculate confidence intervals for a two sample t test or an independent t test. Okay, so I'm going to basically speed through the majority of the calculations and go straight to how to calculate the confidence interval. And in this course, we really give you two methods one through StackCrunch and one through a personalized Excel sheet uh, that you can find within the course homepage. And so I'll show you where to find that stat, that um, Excel sheet first so that uh, you can kind of follow along if you want to. And so I'm going to go to the home page here, scroll all the way down, and it's called Independent T and CI Calculation XLS. And here it is. You just click on this and you download it. And when you open it up, it looks like this. Okay. Um, so go to sheet one. And uh, I have two sheets here because I'm going to do two questions. It only comes with one sheet, just for any clarification there. Um, so when you have it opened up, and let me double check. I think this says PC, and I'm pretty sure you can also open this up in Mac as well. Um, somewhere in there. If you can't, it should be able to open up, but you'll learn the stack crunch one. Uh, method as well, so you may not need it, but it's a little bit easier with the Excel spreadsheet. We'll get into that right now. Okay, so as you can see here within this question, uh, I have two groups. I've already entered in the mean standard deviation and n for each group. I've already calculated the test statistic and p value for each group. I've already uh, put in the correct interpretation for each group. Now comes the part about the confidence interval. And so in this question, what we've already determined is that we have a significance level of 0.1 and we have a one-tailed hypothesis test, okay? So when it comes to what is the confidence interval, well, typically we understand the confidence interval as being the significance level uh, subtracted from one, and that gives you whatever percentage. That is only correct for two-tailed tests. For a one-tailed test, you actually will have a different in confidence level, okay? And let me walk you through really quickly why that is. So this is our t-distribution here. And so you see that when the two-tailed test, I basically shaded in areas here that represent the kind of area where if we have a t-value that is beyond these t's, then in either direction, then we have a significant test, depending on whatever our significance level here. Whatever it is here is arbitrary. It doesn't really matter. Um, but just know that you have a certain amount of area here. Let's use it for an example as we do have a significance level of 0.1. That means that there is an area of 0.05 uh, to the left of this uh, critical value here. And there's a, another area of 0.05 to the, to the right of this critical value here. And so this is what the test is looking for to determine the p-value. Now, this is for a two-tailed test. So a two-tailed test is anything where we're looking for non-equivalence between two samples. When we have a one-tailed test, so whether it's uh, less than or greater than, then what we actually do is we're going to take the area on one side or the other side of the test for this t-value, and we're actually going to shift it over to the left here. And so instead of this now being a 90% confidence interval, and this is 90% because we have 5% here, 5% here, and that is what equals to R1, if this is what alpha is. But when we shift it over to the right here, let's say we're looking for a greater than uh, one-tailed hypothesis, then this actually goes from being a 90% confidence interval to an 80% confidence interval. Okay, so that's super confusing. I understand now 100% because how can you really take a significance level of 0.1 and say that they're somehow getting 80% out of that when 90% is much more intuitive. The reason is, is because when you add in the area on the left side here that you had from the two sample test and you shift it over to the other side to then create the, uh, this one sample distribution, it shifts the critical T value lower, it increases the amount of area here to now 0.1 overall, and really how we understand it as a confidence interval, it still has to be in reference to the entire distribution. And so what we're really talking about is if you have some area here that's 0.1, even if it's a one-tailed test, 
we're still going to consider that there is some non-existent point one over here that's going to make up the entire confidence interval. So although we have point one significance and overall the area under the T distribution is one, when we have a one tail test, we're really calculating now uh, an 80% confidence interval with a significance of one. If it's a, if it's a significance level of 0 0.05, then if it's a two-tailed test, it's a 95% confidence interval, right? So this is two-tailed, 2T. Two if it's 1T, then it's actually a 90% confidence interval. And that relationship goes on and on. So this would be 4.1, 0 0.05. Let's do 0 0.01 here. That means that we go from a 99% confidence interval to a 98% confidence interval. And these are probably the only significance levels that you're going to be dealing with within this homework. You're probably not going to have a significance level of 0 0.001 or 0.2, but now you kind of know the intuition of how to be able to kind of switch back and forth what percentage of confidence interval you're dealing with, depending on if it's a one tail test and what your significance level is. Okay, so this is alpha. All right, so internalize this intuition now because this is going to be how we're going to determine what we put into StatCrunch uh, to be able to calculate the confidence interval. Okay, all right, so here I have everything already. I know that it is a 0.1 significance level. It's a one-tailed test. So I'm going to put in a significance level within StatCrunch here of 0.8. It's my 80% confidence interval here, all right? When I compute that, you see it essentially with rounding, it gives me the correct answer, okay? Minus 1.4 to negative 0.6, right? And so this confidence interval does not have zero between it. There is no zero value between, um, the zero value is not between negative 1.4 or negative 0.6, so that uh, confirms that this is a significant test. If a confidence interval does center, does have zero between it, then that means it was a non-significant test, okay? So now I'm going to move forward and go to a, another example that uses a uh, not equal to uh, uh, a two-tailed uh, hypothesis test here, okay? Oh, and really quickly, actually, let's go back. I don't want to be able to run through this too quickly, so I want to show you the second method here. So here I have the Excel spreadsheet, and within the Excel spreadsheet, I have already entered in the means and the standard deviation in N, just like I had for the previous question for group one and group two. Then I put in my alpha level, which I know is 0.1, and then I put in the number of tails, which I know is uh, one, and there it gives me the same confidence interval. So as you can see here, all right? So the trick is though, is to be able to understand what the percentage is, and we already went over that, but both of these methods are going to give you the same uh, confidence interval. What I like about the Excel method though, is that this is much more straightforward, whereas here you already have to understand what the intuition is behind how you're calculating the confidence interval here. So you still have to know both, but it's, uh, it's important to understand um, how the percentage relates to your confidence interval, okay? Because that's gonna be a, a, portion of, uh, a portion of that question as well. And so if you can kind of see here in this grayed out box, um, it's kind of faint, but you'll see it in the Excel spreadsheet, that the critical T value is going to be different depending on if it's a one-tailed or a two-tailed critical value, and that's what we talked about here is that the critical value here is going to be higher when it's a two-tailed critical value, right? So going uh, more towards the tails of the distribution is an indication of a greater uh, T value. But when it's a one-tailed value, it, it becomes less. And that's what we see here is that this T value here, this critical T value here, which is basically the threshold between significance and non-significance based off of your significance level, is going to be determined upon um, a lower T value for a uh, one tail test than a, a, a two tail test. And that's because we take the area here, we shove it over here or vice versa, and it will reduce the overall um, critical T value. 
Okay, so that's important to understand. This is doing the same thing that we've been talking about here as well. And StackCrunch does the same thing here, but it does it all kind of under the surface, so it's a little bit harder to understand. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the next question that is a two-tailed test to really kind of hammer home the entire intuition here, all right? And so I'm going to, uh, yeah, we can do that. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to bring open the other results. Mm -hmm. Okay, and bring up the second sheet. So here I've done the same thing as I did before. This is summary here, so I only have the n, the mean x bar, and the standard deviation s of my two groups. Um, I've determined that it's a two-tailed hypothesis. My significance level is 0 0.05. My test statistic is 0 0.82. And the p-value is 0.415. Uh, I've already determined that I failed to reject because the p-value is greater than my significance level. Okay, now here you see that since I know that's a two-tailed test, it's 0 0.05 significance level, uh, I'm going to put in that's a 95% confidence interval, okay? Because now I'm dealing with area on either side, 0 0.05. So this uh, would actually look like this, where the amount of area on either side is 0 0.025 on either side. Okay, so this 0 0.025 times 2 uh, equals uh, 0 0.05. And that's my that's confidence interval that I'm dealing with here. 95 confidence interval. If this were a one-tailed test, this would be a 90% confidence interval. Okay, just like as we talked about before. And so here I'm going to put in the changes now. So I have already have all of the mean standard deviation and n for each group. My alpha is 0 0.05, my uh, tails are 2, and there it gives me the correct um, lower and upper confidence level. You can see the difference in the T value, the critical T value, depending on if I have a one or two tail test in this shaded out area here. So this method is very easy to be able to give you the correct uh, lower and upper limit of your confidence interval. Here I have already calculated the correct limit here. You can see that the two methods are uh, essentially equivalent to one another, right? So negative 1.23 here, negative 1.23 here, 2.97, 2.97. So those are correct. The way that I calculated this though is the much more kind of intuitive and straightforward way is that my confidence level is 0.95 uh, here. And that's the same as the percentage here compute and that's how that's done okay I know this is non-significant because there is zero between negative 1.24 and 2.98 okay um, and so that's gonna help you answer the follow-up of that question as well all right I hope this was helpful that this gives you some intuition and different methods to be able to calculate confidence intervals for two independent for an independent t-test or a two sample t-test if you have any further questions please feel free to reach out thanks